Welcome back, everyone. For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the new tournament, which has returned in the great city of Karlsruhe in Germany. Now, the tournament in question that I'm talking about, of course, is the Grenka Chess Classic. Now, the event hasn't happened for a couple of years, but it's finally back, and it has a new format as well, with the players playing essentially slow, rapid, or fast classical. So what that means is the players start with 45 minutes from the beginning of the game. The players are playing two games a day, which is one of the formats that Magus has been a big fan of. He has advocated for it in terms of changing the cycle for the candidates' qualification to potentially play in the world championship at any rate the event starts today and we of course have the five-time former world chess champion magnus carlson back in action tough day for him as he starts off the turn with two blacks but it is magnus probably the greatest player of all time so let's see how the action goes so the first game magnus is playing as richie or richard i should say rapport who is originally from hungary currently representing romania very very talented player he played in the candidates in 2022 but he has fallen off a little bit since then although he did help the chinese player ding loren become the current world champion all right, so this game starts with e4. Magnus now plays c6. We get d4, d5, e5, bishop f5. All pretty standard so far. We have what we call the advanced Karl Khan. The reason we call it the advanced is because white has these pawns on d4 and e5. Now, it's not too, too uh, um, different from the French, which can go e4, e6, d4, d5, e5. And even in the French, white gets the same structure of the pawns on d4 and e5. So after e5, we got bishop to f5 being played by Magnus. Richard plays h4, and now we have h5. Now, black does already have to be careful, because if you play a random move like e6 to try and develop your bishop, this is one of the most basic beginner traps that exists, where white goes g4, queen guards both of these pawns. Bishop can't capture either one of them. If you go to e4, I play f3, queen still guards the pawn. You drop back, and after h5, it's uh-oh, spaghetti -o time. Your bishop is simply trapped. You have no squares available, and you will lose the game. So, Magnus plays h5, stops white from playing g4. It also creates some extra squares for the light square b as well. After h5, we get the move bishop to d3. We get bishop takes bishop, queen takes bishop. Now we have queen to a5 check being played, and Richard plays c3. Here, Magnus goes e6. An important move is black wants to develop this dark square bishop on the diagonal. He also might want to go c5, and the bishop supports this pawn push. Additionally, if you were to play a move like, let's say, knight d7, for example, white could sack a pawn temporarily with e6. And after pawn takes pawn, white does have this move, queen g6, to win the pawn. But even if white goes knight f3, this bishop on f8 is very, very sad. It's walled in by the pawns, and white is much better. So we get e6 from Magnus. Now Richard plays a4 here. We get c5, pawn takes pawn, queen takes pawn, not bishop takes pawn, because then you get forked by b4 here. The two pawns protect each other, and the queen on a5 and the bishop on c5 are both under attack. So we get queen takes c5 being played here by Magnus, and now we have knight to f3, queen to c7 being played, knight a3 here. Richard wants to develop the knight to either the b5 square or to c2 and potentially d4 as well. Here we get the move, bishop takes a3, rook takes a3, Magnus goes knight e7, Richard castles, and now Magnus plays move knight e7. Now, one of the big drawbacks here, or one of the challenges for both sides, is who is better because of this pawn push. Now, on the one hand, white looks like he might be better because he has access to this g5 square. So, for example, if you go knight g5, knight g, or it's black. So, let's say you get this position, for example. If black could put this pawn on h6, for example, and attack the knight, Black would be doing very, very well. But with the pawn on h5, the knight has a nice home here on g5. This is what we call a bastion in the great game of chess, where the knight can't easily be kicked away. If you ever go f6, then you hang this pawn on e6 and lose the game with it. However, Black can make his own argument where after knight to e7, because this white pawn is on h4, let's say white were to play a random move like b3, and you get knight f5, this knight on f5 is also a bastion, it's protected by the pawns here, and white would love to kick the knight with this move g4, knight has to go away, but because the pawn is on h5, Black can also take the pawn on g4. So this game really is a question here of whose square is better with this, these pawn pushes. Is this f5 square for the knight more important than the g5 square for either this white knight or this white bishop? So the game continues with rook to e1 here. We now get the move rook c8. Magnus plays queen, or not Magnus, sorry, Richard goes queen d1. We get a6 here, bishop to g5. And now we have the move knight g6, trying to pressure this pawn on e5 with both of these knights, as well as the queen on c7. Magnus, 
So I said the second time, Richard plays a5 here, and now Magus decides to castle the king. Now, if Magus were to take what looks like a free pawn, it's actually not a free pawn, because after after takes, takes bishop f4 and f6 here, white can simply play this move rook b3, and now you have this big issue with the king. If you castle the king, you hang this pawn on h5. If you don't castle the king, say you play a move like rook d8, now I have rook to b6 here, pawn supports the rook, pressure on the pawn, pressure on the knight, all of white's pieces are harmonious, and white is attacking. So after a5, Magnus decides to castle. Richard plays rook to a4 here. We get rook to e8. Again, if black were to take, white intends to simply trade and go bishop to f4 and pin the knight on e5. So we get rook to e8 here. Richard plays rook to d4, and now Magnus decides to take the pawn. Now, this is a fairly serious mistake here. The computer actually wants Magnus to play like a computer and take the pawn on a5 and ignore everything whatsoever on the king side or the center of the board. Now, I suspect the reason that Magnus did not go for this is that Richard could play c4 here, and now you see the reason that he moved the rook to d4 in the first place, as he's putting a lot of pressure on the d file as well as pressure on the pawn on d5. So Magnus takes, now we get takes, takes, and here Richard plays this move, Bishop f4. Now this move is, I think, not correct if, I remember, if I'm remembering. I think Queen takes h5 was supposed to be a little bit better here, because now if Black plays f6 in this position, there's a great sacrifice where White can play Bishop takes pawn, sacking the Bishop. If Black takes with the Rook, uh-oh, spaghetti -o, you hang the Rook in the game. And after Pawn takes Bishop, White can now sack the Rook with Rook takes e5 here. And after queen takes, rook to g4 would actually be winning the game. King has no squares available here. If you go queen g5, I simply take your queen. If you take with a pawn, I go check, you block, I take the queen, take the pawn on e5. And here with all these pawns on the king side, white is going to start pushing p, and white should win the game in due time. Instead, Richard goes bishop f4, we get f6, now we have queen h5. And the reason this order is wrong is that now Magnus can go queen f7 breaking the pin from the bishop to the knight and then the queen, but also forcing white to do something to the queen and being unable to capture this horse and win some pieces in the middle of the board. So we get queen takes queen, knight takes, bishop to h2, played here, dodging a fork. If you go b3, e5, once again, you lose either the bishop or the rook. So we get bishop h2, king h7 being played. We get g4, now knight to d8 by Magnus, trying to rotate the horse to c6, pressuring the rook and the pawn. Now we get the move bishop d6, we have rook to g8, rook b4, knight c6, takes, takes, rook d7, and now Magnus jumps to c4 with the horse. Now at this point, as you can tell from the valuation, position is very, very balanced, and the game should end in a draw. So we get b3, now we have knight to d2 being played by Magnus, rook to e2, white does not want to play a move like bishop f4, because then it's uh-oh, spaghetti -o time once again, where we get the fork with knight f3. So we get rook to e2, knight takes pawn, Bishop e7 played here, and now Magnus goes king h6. The reason for king h6, you push the pawn, you hang this pawn on f6 due to the pin. So we get king h6, king f1 played here by Richie, and now we have e5 from Magnus, and now rook to b2, knight to a5, rook to b6, knight to c4, rook a6, and now Magnus plays this move rook a8. After takes, 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 white is up a pawn here in this endgame with a rook, a bishop, and four pawns versus a rook, knight, and three. But objectively, it should be close to a draw because the pawn on c3 is very weak, and these pawns on g4 and h4 are already a little bit extended. This game continues with rook a2. We get bishop c5. Magnus plays rook to c2, pressuring this pawn on c3. Rook to d3 played by Richie to guard the pawn. And now Magnus plays this move, knight to d2. Now, this move is a double question mark blunder. This is a blunder that maybe a 1300 would make, but a world champion, the probably the greatest player of all time, making this sort of a blunder is simply inexplicable. Magnus plays knight to d2, which effectively loses the game. Computer wants king h7 first, followed by knight d2. And the reason for that is because in the game, after knight to d2, white can sack the rook with rook takes knight. And here, Magnus Carlsen simply resigns the game. If he takes the rook, there's bishop to e3, checking the king and winning the rook. And if you play rook takes c3 after check king h7, let's just say rook to d7, white will eventually go h5, h6, and with an extra bishop on the board, white will win very easily. So, Magnus may be a little bit rusty, but nonetheless, this blunder comes out of the blue. A shocking blunder from Magnus, and in a way, it's kind of ironic, because Magnus Carlsen recently was talking about how he prefers 
quicker time controls he doesn't want to play he might not ever play a classical chess a normal classical chess tournament ever again so it's kind of funny that Magnus's move knight d2 is a move that he played because he had no time on the clock whereas in a classical game Magnus Carlsen would never make this blunder whatsoever so in a way it's kind of ironic that Magnus talks about rapid blitz wanting quicker chess not liking classical and then the reason he makes this blunder in this game is specifically because he has limited time and he cannot think for all that long so huge mistake for Magnus he loses this game and he starts off with zero points out of one now Magnus would Magnus would of course um play the second game which we'll take a brief look at which uh is against none other than Daniel Fridman now Daniel Fridman is a player who did qualify for this event by winning the Grenka Open all the way back in the year 2019 so as I said earlier this Grenka tournament has not happened since then obviously 2019 feels like a different lifetime ago man what a different world we lived in back then I wasn't even I wasn't even streaming all the time I, I actually was a professional chess player God forbid what a horrible life that was but we are back um and and we have this game being played in 2024 between Daniel Fridman and of course Magnus Carlsen so the game starts out with d4 Magnus plays knight to f6 we get this move knight f3 b6 played g3 bishop b7 bishop g2 and now Magnus goes for the double fianchito with b6 and g6 we get c4 bishop g7 castles castles d5 played and now we have the move knight to a6 after knight to a6 we get knight to c3 being played now we have knight to c5 and here knight d4 is played by Fridman after knight to d4 we get e5 knight to b3 d6 is played takes takes a3 and now knight to d7 played here by Magnus now what Magnus is looking to do here is he's looking to play on the king side he wants to go f5 e4 maybe f5 f4 he's hoping that he can get a king side attack before white can attack on the queen side now the bishop on b7 of course very passive here for black it's walled in by the two pawns on d5 and c4 so it's not an active piece yet we get e4 f5 played b4 from Fridman we got bishop a6 queen to d3 we got rook bishop to c8 we have knight to a4 knight to f6 f3 takes takes and f4 so Magnus here going all in trying to play us like a king's Indian he wants to start pushing p on the king's side maybe sacks and pieces white is hoping to break through on the queen side so this is essentially transposed from a queen's Indian into a king's Indian so we get knight c3 g5 is played now we have g4 h5 h3 takes takes and Magnus Carlsen sacks the knight with knight takes pawn on g4 pawn takes knight bishop takes and Magnus just simply wants to move the bishop back so you play some waiting moves like rook a2 rook a1 and after g4 there's queen h4 there's g3 there's f3 and these pawns are very very menacing and white's king is probably going to get checkmated fairly soon so the game continues with bishop to h3 we get queen d7 takes takes we have king to f2 queen to h4 played king e2 g4 king d1 f3 and now we have this move king c2 being played now up to this point Fridman is playing a very very good game he's defending extremely well even though Magus has these pawns going up the board the king has done a little bit of a walk here has gotten some exercise he's run over to the queen side and now there are no ideas of checkmating the king so we get the move f2 here from Magus, and now Fridman makes a fairly serious mistake with this move queen to e2 or actually sorry queen e2 is still fine um bishop d bishop to e3 is the big mistake here what he should have played was bishop to d2 I'm not actually sure of the exact reason but I suspect it has to do with the fact that after rook to f8 if you play rook h1 black does not have this move queen g3 putting pressure on this bishop on e3 whereas in the game after bishop to e3 rook f8 if we have rook h1 being played here I think queen g3 here no maybe queen g3 isn't right because of king d2 uh, apparently queen f6 is better don't ask me why and I guess it's it has to be some reason with the bishop being on e3 as to why this isn't great but I honestly don't know and I'm not going to pretend that I'm some computer and looking at all the analysis lines so after rook f8 Fridman plays like a human he plays the move rook takes a7 logical move and now Magus blunders with this move g3 now much like the game against report Magus it feels like he's just missing little things here and g3 is just simply a mistake now Magus probably thought look I'm gonna go g2 I'm pushing p I'm getting a second queen what more does anybody want in life but the problem is that after g3 now white can go rook to a8 and the rook on f3 is simply loose now the reason this is so important is because black would love to push p on the king side but it's not easy and with one set of the rooks coming off the board here in this position white has much better chance to maybe give back a bishop for a couple of pawns and the chance of a draw become a lot higher so 
Magus takes the rook. We got queen takes rook. Now he goes queen to h3. And here Fridman plays this move, rook h1. Magus plays rook f8. And now we get the move rook takes h3, which is simply a mistake. What Fridman should have done here is he should have sacked the queen with queen takes rook. And after takes, takes, queen takes takes and b5 computer gives black an advantage here but white is very close to setting up a fortress for the following reason this knight is an amazing piece it guards all of these pawns it also stops the checks on a2 e2 and a4 as well so this queen simply is dominated the queen has no squares to go after the white king and on top of that this bishop is completely out of play if black could magically say put the bishop on this diagonal just to illustrate the point bishop is very very well placed here um not e3 of course you can go to d4 or you can go to a5 and go after this white horse on c3 but when we look at this position here after b5 the bishop cannot go to h6 it's also not on this diagonal so the bishop is simply walled in by the pawns and the computer thinks that after rook g1 white has great chances to draw the game now of course if you were to ask magnus and people have asked him before magnus does not believe in fortresses so he probably would say that he still thinks that he could have won the game but i suspect that if you were playing against stockfish here the computer would draw this very very easily with the white pieces so back to the game we get rook takes h3 instead we get rook takes queen takes takes king b3 and now after g2 magnus is very close to promoting to a new queen and winning the game we get rook to g3 king to f7 c5 played here bishop to f8 played by magnus we get king c4 and now we have this move bishop to h6 trying to activate the bishop now magnus has made some mistakes here just to illustrate the, the easier way to win the best line here i believe was rook to f3 here because after rook to h4 and rook to f4 at least the weak engine was saying this was winning when i was looking at it live on my stream but maybe it's not so clear after rook to h1 at any rate back to the game we get to this position here where now after b5 white has a bunch of counterplay white wants to go for b6 here and try to push p and create his own queen black also has has some problems with the pawn structure as well and if black could magically queen the pawn here he would win but white is very very quick so we get this move d takes c5 d6 played here by fridman takes b6 white desperately trying to push his pawn and get his queen as well game continues with rook b2 and now we get this move b7 which is a mistake obviously in a human game it's not a move that i can really fault a uh, computer wants knight to d5 and the reason is pretty dank after bishop f4 rook g4 Fridman probably thought bishop h2 pawn is stopped you can't go forward rook captures and black is queening here so for example you go b7 queen takes takes this pawn is on pre you can't really stop it from being captured and you lose the game but in this position after bishop a2 white has the very nasty ticklish move king c3 tickling the rook on b2 if you go away suddenly after b7 you can't get back to the square and white gets a queen and wins the game and now i think after rook f2 b7 computer says you can check play something like rook g3 takes takes queen queen but after check king g6 and takes white should draw this game nonetheless friedman plays b7 we get rook check now we have king to d5 being played here rook takes pawn rook takes pawn and now the move rook b6 now magnus is up two pawns here he has three versus one but the big issue is that this king is super active as it keeps pressure on all three of these pawns magnus goes we get rook a2 magnus now goes rook to b3 already here i feel like rook to a2 is kind of a move that isn't best if Fridman had played this move king c4 trying to jam the knight on d5 he probably would have drawn the game with perfect play the simplest example would be check check and then something like c4 where after knight b5 black and plays move c3 white takes a pawn there's check winning the knight if white were to take on d6 after i was gonna say takes maybe this is still a draw with bishop d2 because white can take and go rook g1 to sack the rook um but the best line i think here is to go knight b5 c3 and actually take 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 and here white will have a rook versus a rook and a bishop this is a theoretical draw would it be a drawn game in, in regular chess who knows magnus probably would find some way to swindle this like he did against ali reza Frouge in the champion's chess tour but theoretically this would be a draw at any rate we get the move rook to a2 we have rook to b3 being played here by magnus we get rook a7 king f6 now after king c4 check we get king d5 and magnus finds this great move bishop d2 now what you'll notice in this position is the that this knight on c3 would love to be on the square on d5 you could put this knight on d5 we have a great bastion here knight can never be touched by the bishop or the rook frankly it's just a huge huge piece and white probably will at least draw this game if not more in a blitz game maybe white could even try to try to win but white will never lose but in this position you can't put the knight on d5 so the knight has to go to a passive square on e2 and now with the knight unable to get to this d5 square magus shows some great technique here he plays rook to b3 
We got this move rook to a2 being played. If white were to take, for example, there's rook to e3. Knight is completely dominated. No squares available here. You have to go to g1. And now after rook to d3, if you take, there's bishop e3 with the classic yo-yo. White will win both the rook and the knight here. Both of these are going to fall in turn. And if you play a move like king c6, now black can go c4, just simply pushing p up the board and winning the game very, very soon. So we get rook to a2. Now we have bishop b4 here. Another nice move from Magnus. Bishop guards the pawn on c5. We get king takes pawn. And now we have this move check, forcing the king away from this d file. So it's no longer attacking the pawn. You would love to go here, but then you hang this pawn on e5. So we get check. Now we get king g5. Pawn's not under attack. King is off sides. It's cut off by the rook here. And the rest is very straightforward. We get king b5. King g4 played. King c4. Rook to d1 played here by Magus. This knight is just very, very sad here. No squares available. All of these squares are basically covered. Knight c3 also loses to rook c1 as well. So this knight simply has no squares available. All of these squares are simply not available to the horse. So we get rook c2, king f3, knight to c1 is played here. Now Magus plays king e4. We get knight b3, rook d3, check, rook e3. Knight c1 played here. And after the exchange and king to f3, Magus wins the game. We get knight g1. King g2, knight e2, king f2, knight c1, and e4. Black is simply pushing the pawn up the board. White can't really do anything. It's worth pointing out the bishop and the pawn simply guard each other. And the bishop also supports the queening square on e1 as well. So the rest is very simplistic. We get king d5, e3, knight d3, king f1. And after king to f1, Daniel Fridman resigns here against Magnus Carlsen as his pawn push with e2 and e1 is unstoppable. Let's say king c4, e2, king d5, e1 takes takes here now black simply brings the king closer starts pushing the pawn up the board and he will win in a couple of moves so after king f1 fridman resigns this game magus does get a critical win in the second game of the day with the black pieces he's now on a score of one out of two effectively even as though he had drawn two games obviously a huge howler in the first game but he is able to come back and win the second game in the style of a true end game wizard so all's well that ends well for magus on day one of the grenka chess classic being held in karlsruhe germany so on that note, if you guys have not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure that you smash that subscribe button below and we'll be back soon with some more great YouTube only content. See you guys. Bye.